Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. We are having a discussion right now of which yeah. way is right. I say it's that way. I say it's that way. No, <laughs> it's that way. Well, we're not going to get anywhere or any place if, well, unless we figure this out. What, what, Somebody's got to yield. Which, we'll leave it up to you. Which way is the right way? Yeah, which way is the right way? Is it that way or this way? Is it her way or my way? Or is it my way or the highway? <laughs> and that's kind of where we're at tonight, oh, that's isn't right. it? right. And that's so right. we're going to be talking tonight about, is that right? Well, sometimes it's not. Still holding it? my way. <laughs> <laughs> She's still trying to get her way, but mine's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Someone decided to FaceTime there at the last second. Um, so the name of our devotion tonight is called, Is That Right? Is that right? You know, I use that phrase a lot. I, you know, like if someone's telling me something and some information and I'll say, is that right? What am I meaning when I say that? What do we mean when we say it? Why do we say that? Well, a lot of times you say it because you don't know what's right. And yeah. so you're, you're, is that right? I didn't know that. Or, Other times you may know what is really right. And you're going, oh, is that right? <laughs> so a lot of it's got to do... Oh with my that, goodness, we're with how you say it, but we're we're going to talk about that phrase and what it means to us. Tonight. So it means when we say, "Is that right?" It means, "Is that true? Is that allowed? Is that ethical?" It's in it's in us, and you know, um, it's there's a strong uh, need embedded in us, in our flesh, to be right, isn't it? How many yeah. of you have ever dealt with that? Like, I need to be right. Yeah, and... And see, it's too bright in here. Honey, <laughs> okay, you want to go check? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, do, uh, let me ask you this. Do you know... It's, it's not right. It's not too bright in here. It's way it's, too bright. It's, 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 it's perfect, right? The sun just came out, and it's just bright, so... <laughs> so, anyway. that's our example. That's the second example of that. Okay, do you know someone who always has to be right? Um, even though sometimes they're wrong, but there's that need that they have to be right. Maybe it's that person person that uh, storms off the, the court, you know, in basketball and, and just... They get a foul called on them and they say, I wasn't no foul. Yeah. And uh, because they want to win no matter what. And in their mind, they're right. And, and sometimes we can all get there, can't we, if we're not careful? We can get in our mind that we're right and everybody else is wrong. Okay, so you got... Oh, no, here it is. I thought that said eggs for a minute, but that's ego. <laughs> fragile eggs, that would work too, but this is fragile. Sometimes it's our fragile ego that, uh, and our security feels threatened. Yeah. You know, so, it, and we're protecting our self-image, and we want to look bigger, smarter, or more capable, and we just, we just want to be right. Sometimes our ego is like an egg, and it needs to be cracked, right? Yeah. <laughs> So you were talking about the American. Well, Idol. we talked about. Well, I don't I know. Fix these you know, windows. when if you've ever years ago, American Idol came on, and one of the funniest parts of the show was that when they would bring people out to sing, and some of them they allowed on television, not because of their singing ability, but because of their inability to sing. And that was some of the highlights of the show. I knew a lot of people that watched that show, and they said, "Oh, that's my favorite part." So they get somebody on there that was completely tone deaf, and they started singing. No, that's and the, right. The judges, <laughs> the judges would, you know, start making faces and and looking at each other and start to laugh, and they would try and let them know that you know you need to find a different profession. You know that you you just don't have the ability to sing. And I, I, I saw some of those where those contestants just went off on them. Well, you just don't know talent, and I'm not going to let you rob me of my singing ability. And, 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 and the, I'm telling you, the, sometimes you have to... It wasn't their gift. Yeah, and sometimes you've got to recognize this. There are some people that think they're so right, and everybody else knows they're wrong. So they're the only person in the room that still thinks they're right. And when that happens, it can become an embarrassment to them. Right. Once they figure out that they were wrong. So being right, it just affirms and assures our own self-worth. But it's our pride, right? That, that need to be right. And so have you ever thought something was right your whole life? 
and you discovered that it was wrong? Yeah, I put you an example down for that one. You sure did. Do you remember you when? You should add to my notes you, again. <laughs> do you remember when they used to tell you to put butter on a burn? Yes. And butter was one of the worst things you could do on a burn because it sealed the heat in. Ooh. And then later they discovered, you know, later they discovered that. And so then she put down, what do you do with that discovery? What do you do when you find out that it's wrong? Well, you quit using butter, yeah. right? Yeah. You don't, or you may, you, don't, you may still put it on your toast, but you don't put it on a burn anymore. So my sister Kim, not long ago, found out her name, and she's uh, 50 now, but she found out her name was spelled uh, differently when she found her birth certificate. I guess she never really looked at it, but it, instead of, like Kimberly, instead of L-Y, like she's always spelled it, it's L-E-Y. All these years, she didn't know that, so she found out something was, wasn't right, and then my, my sister-in-law found out just a, I mean, just a few years ago that her birthday was on the 28th of, um, the 28th of April instead of the 27th. And so what do you do with that discovery? Well, it's like, man, that wasn't she right. celebrated that birthday? Oh, years and years. She's in her 60s. And she just found this out just probably maybe five years or so. So she came up with a great solution. She celebrates both days. <laughs> <laughs> so now she gets two for the price of one. <laughs> so Proverbs 21 and 2 says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the heart. Which means, obviously, that the Lord, he, he examines our heart. He knows all about us. Judges 17 and 6 says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. You know, while you're there, I, there's something I thought was important about this being right. There was a, Helen Keller made this statement and said, there is no king who has not had a slave among his ancestors and no slave that has not had a king among his ancestors. So sometimes what we're, we're, we're trying to secure our worth or trying to, you know, feel like you know being right well I've, I've got to mark my ground I've got yeah. look what she's saying is this is everybody's got some royalty in them and everybody's got flesh. some flesh you know I mean there, there's some places in your life where you're Commonality. where you can celebrate and places in our life that are tragedies yes. and so what we do is we come to an understanding that God is in control yes. and we don't have to seek to try and, you know, well, I've got to be right about this and I'm going to prove this and I'm going to, yes. because there are some things that uh, are just as important as being right, as aren't there? Right. So John, Psalms 15, 1 through 3, this is in the NLT, who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord, who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from sincere hearts, those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. And so I thought this was interesting because when he says holy heal, heal there means promotion. It's like who of you are going to, that God can promote. And so we're going to find out how that he promotes us. And it's not about us, you know, just being right, but it's the it's about about being righteous. And so there is a difference. But before we get there, I want to talk about this. Have you ever found it hard to admit you were wrong? And you know, you that's know, a real struggle for you, isn't it? It, it, <laughs> it, ha it has been. Yeah, I mean, just in yeah. our, especially in our uh, the first year of our marriage. You know, as you as you grow and mature in your walk with God you begin to recognize that there are some battles that just aren't worth having, right? That, you, you know, you, you're trying to, you know, being right isn't always worth the fight that it's going to entail. Right, so um, I remember one time Rick and I was in an argument. I don't remember what it was really about. So it was real important. <laughs> but we had a discussion, and, you know, especially us women, we... We just shut down and we just, you know, we, we say our piece and then it's like we're this is silent treatment. And once I, again, I don't remember what it was about, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, do but, you remember who was right? <laughs> <laughs> did we ever settle that? Yeah. I do know that he was the one that came up, you know, um, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but he came into the room. It was like we had, I don't know how long, a day, I'm sure we were fighting, being upset with each other. 
and he finally he came into my bedroom. Oh, we weren't even. You said we weren't even married then. I didn't. You're getting two stories mixed up. <laughs> Are you sure? I wasn't even. I wasn't even there. You I weren't even it, there when yeah. I went in. I went in. Oh, and that's right. I went. I left. Oh, that's went, right. Me, You're right. Let, see, <laughs> what am I telling you? <laughs> that uh, no, <laughs> no. What what happened is, Do and I, I don't know. I don't remember it, but I remember what I did. I uh, I went to their house, and I before they ever got there, and I went. Uh, I'd I'd written a note to her, and I had she. Had, I bought her a little. Uh, mirror that had a dove on it that was a magnet and when you wound it up Remember the those? dove would fly it would and it, it played that song it was also a music box and it played that song You, you Light Up My Life light up my life. well it didn't sing it it just played <laughs> music so what I did is I told I, get, I left instructions for her I said please wind this up and listen to the music before you read the note and she wound it up read the note and uh we lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> it was precious, and it made me cry. So look, it's not worth winning an argument at the cost of being right. But I remember how that made me feel, and you were the one that uh, made that first step. And we'll talk about that, too, in a little bit. So if you take the high road, the view is much better. Yeah, here's the deal is that sometimes people are all, you know, if, you're, if you find out, you may think you're right, but if you find out you're wrong, it's important that you're willing to admit that. But so, and there's a story between Samuel and King Saul in Scripture, and it showed why God ends up taking the kingdom away from Saul is because Saul's heart wasn't in the right place. Right. And so he had been instructed. God gave him instructions on what he's supposed to do, wipe out the Amalekites, destroy all the... the uh, sheep, all the animals, everything. And so Samuel goes to meet him, and uh, he came, uh, King Saul came up to him, and, he, and Samuel looked at him and he said, why haven't you obeyed the command of God? And he said, I have obeyed the command of God. And he said, then what's all this bleeding of sheep in my ears? And he said, oh, he said, well, we, you know, we killed all the animals, you know, and all the people, but we kept the best animals you know, to sacrifice to the Lord. And it's like Saul is saying, my idea is better than God's. And Samuel looked at him and he said, he said, you've done foolishly. He said, the kingdom would have been established to you forever. He said, but now it's been taken away from you and given to another. And he told him, he said, obedience is better than sacrifice and to obey better than the fat of rams. And so Saul could not come to grips with being wrong. He, he had to be right no matter what the cost, and it cost him the kingdom. Right, so you and I were talking today about you when it comes to, I mean, I've always said, I, I told Rick not long ago, I said you could have been a lawyer because he, he, he I mean, he appreciates, I mean, he loves justice and truth and, you know, but uh, so the, the truth is important to him. Look, uh, but some truths aren't, aren't yeah, worth going I, I, I to <laughs> say, change anybody's I life. Her, I said some truths just aren't going to change anybody's lives and as I've grown older I've come to realize that but man when I was young I mean it was you know I I was Just so day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <kidding. laughs> I'm a day older <laughs> but when when for, let me give you an uh, for yeah. instance okay so a lot of times you know, if you're watching an old television or show or something, or somebody's talking about something in history, and I know that's not right, and they're they're saying something, I'm going, is that right? And and so I think that's not right. That doesn't sound right to me. So I start to dig it out and I investigate it. I remember one time we were watching this show yeah. with some friends, and there was this angel that was supposed to be popping up all around. Ago. And it's been years ago, <laughs> and uh, this is my story. I've done be quiet. It too. Okay, so uh, there was this angel that kept popping up, you know, as different people, and well, she popped up, or you know, and so we were watching it, and then the folks we were watching it with, they said, "Oh, look, look, you know, there, there she, she popped up in the show as the judge. The judge was an angel, and I looked and I thought, that's, that's a totally different person. That's not the person that was playing that angel. The angel was Patty." 
Duke and that judge was like Vanessa Redgrave or something. And, and so I'm <laughs> thinking, I'm, I'm thinking that's not right. And I started to say something and I got the nudge that's from Debbie. Right. And I it thought, okay, yeah, it's not going to change anybody's life. And it, <laughs> well, it might to the negative if I, if I pursue it, I'm going to show you I'm right. And it's enough. Look, there, sometimes it's enough to just know yes. you're right in your heart without right. having to prove it. So the more spiritually mature mature we get, the more we find that it's not worth uh, losing it losing, losing our peace, our peace over. over. Um, so now let me let me insert here. Now, if it's a truth of God's word, that's right. I'm going to die on that hill. I'm you not letting it. that up. I'm not. I'm not letting go of that. I'm not going to capitulate when it comes to the truth of God's word. But whether or not some actor was in a movie, it's just I not know, worth it. I'm I thinking, well, I'm not winning a prize if I prove myself right in it. Well, I thought about David, and you know, we use him for an example a lot, and, but it's, it's so true. He was a man after God's own heart, but it's because he was willing to admit when he was wrong. You know, he admitted guilt, and he apologized for his wrongdoings over and over with God. And it was the right thing to do. So he had a humble heart. Yeah, so it's the difference between right and righteous. We want to be right, don't we? I mean, I want to do the right thing, and I want to be right. And throw a heart up if you want to be right. We do. It's, I yeah. mean, it's just we want to be right. But here's, here's what you have to remember. You could end up being right, but have the wrong spirit. That's right. And so if, if you're right and you've got the wrong spirit, then you haven't accomplished anything. Yes, yes. Even, even when it comes to God's Word, if I'm right... Uh, when it comes to God's word, but I've got the wrong spirit and I'm pushing people away from God. You That's have right. to present the truth in such a way that it draws people to God, not right. pushing him away. So um, righteous means it's acting in accord with divine moral law. So it's, I mean, it's, it's like doing, doing what's right. So we want to do the right thing. We want to be righteous and we want to glean from the righteous. So when you when you think that the right the right if I talk right <laughs> the right choices <laughs> the right voices determine the right choices. So have you ever been a, in a situation uh, that you said this doesn't feel right because it's that righteous yeah. feeling? You know you want to do God's you know you want to do what's right according to God like, and according you, to His word. Did you ever slip out of the house when you were a kid? I mean we know what. And right. you thought, boy, this don't feel right. I yeah. sure hope I don't get caught. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Okay, so Psalms 51 and 10 says, this is David's words, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So there's a difference between proving you're right and having a right spirit. Right. Say right spirit. Right. Say right, right spirit. spirit. Yeah, so there's a difference. And I remember this You know, here's, let me, before you get into a funny, I, I want you to think about this. How do you know it's going to be funny? Because I saw you smile. <laughs> <laughs> I always smile. The... I want you to think about this with David. David was wrong yes. concerning Bathsheba. But because when he was called on it and brought into account for it by a prophet, yes. David showed the right spirit. He humbled himself. Yes, yes. And because of that, that's why he's a man after God's own yes, heart. Yes. It's not because he, he was always right. It's because... He maintained that right spirit. So maintain, that's what made me think of that. We were in Mexico, it's been many years ago, and my mom went on this trip, and so our uh, our interpreter, and there was another girl that, he taught us a song, or no, it was a song that she came, um, that she brought on the trip, and it's called Maintain, or no, Keep My Spirit Right. In English, it was, keep my spirit right. Oh, Lord, I pray, keep my spirit right. I don't want to go astray. In the midst of the day or the heat of the night, help me win this fight. Keep my spirit right. So we thought this would be a great song to sing, you know, at the services at night, but we had to learn it in Spanish. So we ended up, I mean, it was, uh, um, we sung it wrong. It was, I mean, it was, it just, it, it didn't translate right. So the listen, the harmony felt right. Oh, we had just a three, like a quartet. Sounded great. We had a quartet going on, message. but it you know, the harmony felt right, but the song was all wrong. And what we were saying is, and my mom, you know, of course she remember I told you she told me, honey, sing Deb, sing with all your heart. And so I meant I thought that meant sing as loud as she could. So then she was just singing with all of her heart and just her eyes were just. I mean, she said, "Montan mi espíritu." 
And what we were end up saying was, my spirit's not right. Lord, I pray my spirit's not right. So everybody in the, they were, they were looking at us like, oh, their spirit's not right. So we want to have a, we, we found out afterwards that we really butchered it all up. But I didn't realize that. Was yeah, yeah. Saying. We, it was, anyway. So, uh. It was really hard to preach that. Night. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, uh, James and John, you talked about. Yeah, you know, James and John, the Jesus' disciples, they were known as the sons of thunder. So Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He's going to pass through this town, and people, the, the people there told him, no, they don't want him passing through the town. And so James and John go up to him. Now, look, these boys had faith. They go up to Jesus, and they say, Lord, do you want us to call fire out of heaven, even as Elijah did, and consume these people? Yeah. And they had the faith. That God could do it, but Jesus looked at me and said, "You don't even know what spirit you're of." He's, I mean, you know, you can have strong faith but have the wrong spirit. Right. You may be, you may believe God's going to do something, but you may be asking Him to do the wrong thing. Remember, it's when we pray in accordance to God's will that things happen. So the right spirit is constant. It's steadfast. It's humble. Just. And unmovable it's the Spirit of Christ so every day when we get up Lord I give you my mind the Bible says let this mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus and we know when we received his spirit it's Christ's spirit right. he said I'm with you on earth he said I'm with you but see the comforter came which is the Spirit of Christ but he said I shall be in you so we how do we activate that or how do we walk in that right spirit and how are you know we really do we really want to do the right thing and go the right way don't we so i want to go the right way so we've got to if we're going to go the right way we've got to be careful what we're saying yeah right. because you know we can say something i remember i had a pastor friend and a lady came to him and she was upset and she walked into his office and she said or no i'm sorry she called him and she said i just called to give you a piece of my mind and he said, sister, I wouldn't dream of taking the last piece. And then after he said that, he was telling me this. And then he looked at me and he said, and I had to call her up and apologize. Because sometimes we just, yeah. oh, you know, we're going to get back and it's not worth it. It's right. So humility wins some of the hottest battles. Uh, Matthew 23 and 12 says, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. It's like that other scripture I read to you said, who will dwell on your holy hill. In other words, I'm going to lift you up if you walk in humility. Um, so we take the high road. The view is much better. I said that while ago. But I read this. It's your promotion. But I read this today and I thought it was good. It's an anonymous 17th century nun had these words to say about growing older and keeping a sweet, right spirit toward others. Lord, keep me from getting talkative. <laughs> from thinking that I must say something on every subject and on every occasion. Release me from craving to straighten out everybody's affairs. <laughs> Make me thoughtful but not moody. Helpful but not bossy. Keep my mind from the recital of endless details. Give me wings to come to the point. Wow, that's and, a powerful word. And then and she said, um, with a growing humility. Um, so, am I right or righteous? Am I right with the right spirit and so um, we've said this before but something to get a hold of and you can remember it and you can help others with it um, eight words that can heal a relationship and that's first that we the daily submission is how we walk in humility right mm -hmm. right I say right a lot if you haven't noticed in these <laughs> these programs I do say right a lot so it's I'm sorry I was wrong please forgive me so James 4 and 10 says humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up so those that take the high road of humility are never bothered by heavy traffic. You know, being humble, the, the scripture says that he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the yes. humble. So being humble isn't about a action. It's about a lifestyle. It's not about doing something, you know, perfect, or... you know, at, at, at a certain venture in our life. It's about living a life like that. There was a man uh, in 1847, his name was Sir James Simpson, and he was a doctor, and he discovered chloroform. And people, if, if, if you know the history of chloroform, I mean, it was groundbreaking. It, it caused people to quit fearing operations because for the first time they were able to have an operation without 
fearing pain and suffering. You know, the chloroform, they would put you out. It was in moderation. They could keep you under, and the doctor could perform the surgery. Before, when there wasn't any of that, you know, you, I mean, you just had to bear up, and sometimes people, wow. you know, would pass out, and the pain become too great, and you could My lose goodness. a patient. So he was, several years later, he is teaching at Edinburgh uh, University in England, where he was from. And one of the students asked him, he said, uh, Dr. Simpson, what do you feel like your single greatest achievement is in life? And they expected him to talk about chloroform. But he, when he was asked that question, this is the way he responded. My most valuable discovery was when I discovered myself a sinner and that Jesus Christ was my Savior. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, could you imagine a doctor saying that in a university today? And, and the way that that might be greeted. But this person was so humble yes. and, and wanted more than anything that people should know what Jesus had done for him. Humble and grateful. I'm telling you, that's the right way. And when we try and live our lives that way and pattern our lives that way, we have a promise from God that he'll lift us up. No matter what, I, I'm not talking about to be exalted, but I'm talking about that no matter what we're facing, no matter Raise what we're going up. through, he's going to lift us up. That's right. We want to pray for you right now that no matter where you're at, that you are going to experience the right choice the right way, and you're going to be saved, you able to say, right. yes, that's right. Let's pray together. Father, we're thankful Thank you, for Jesus. your goodness, for your word, and God, for your instruction. Thank you so much for saving us. We are so grateful and so thankful, God, that you would love us that much. Yes, Jesus. That you would give your life for us, Jesus. Help us, Father, to always remember how precious that is, how valuable that is. And God, help us, Father, never to get stuck on ourselves or never to fight over what's right when it's not going to matter. But help us to stand yes. for what's right when it's going to make a difference. Yes, yes. Father, we thank you for the truth of your word and let us always stand for it. We thank you for that tonight and pray, God, that you'll touch people that are watching. Lift them up. Show them the right way. In Jesus' Amen. name. We love you guys. Have a great love evening. You all. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.